Top five reasons. A bit. Hot. Bop. Number one. Number one is Hi, I'm Dr. David Pena. I'm a behavioral neuroscientist. And these are the top five deal breakers with Australian cattle dogs. Deal breaker number one. Number one is their herding instinct. Australian cattle dogs <laughs> have been bred to, to herd large, angry animals. And they do that by biting, healing, biting at the, nipping at the heel. Uh, if you've ever experienced a, a dog nip at you, it's, it's like like really strong pinch. It's not pleasant. It is not fun. And that's not the only place they bite. <clears throat> they will bite at your heels. They will bite at your knees. They will bite at your fingers. And if you give them an opportunity, they will bite at your face. Places that are very sensitive to them biting, they will bite. Uh, if you think you're going to get rid of their nipping behaviors for the, enti hey, don't bite for the entirety of their life, uh, you are not being realistic with yourself. This behavior is bred into them. It's not gonna go away with an hour of training. Uh, and I'm sorry to tell you that. You can learn to control this dog's mouth so that it does not bite and nip very often. But controlling their mouth is going to be a lifelong process for the dog. That can be a very, very long time and you should really consider whether or not you want a dog that might bite a small child, for instance, in the face, they will bite them, especially when they're puppies, and you haven't learned to control it while they're biting yet. So be very careful. Number one, deal breaker. The dogs do bite, and they will bite forever. Number two, number two, Australian cattle dogs have a ton of energy. We spend something like two to three hours a day working out the dog outside, playing with her, teaching her things. Um, to keep her steady in her behavior. If what we found is if you don't, if you, if you say she gets injured or she gets sick, and we have to kennel her or keep her confined, not confined, but like restrained so that she doesn't hurt herself anymore. Um, these those days are nightmare days. She starts to get very irritable. She starts to get very vocal and then she starts to get very destructive. Um, <clears throat> so far we've never made it to that level like in its entirety, but we've seen the beginnings of her just chewing on things she shouldn't be chewing on um, and all of that um, stem from her getting injured or her getting sick or her not being able to play outside for whatever reason. These, these dogs ha have a ton of energy and you need to let it out somehow. And that means about two to three hours a day outside. Um, and you can also overdo it, so don't overdo it. So number two, the dogs have a ton of energy and they're gonna require a ton of your time. Number three, this is a double-edged sword. Uh, the dogs are very smart. And this is great for training. The dog can, Marie can basically learn anything I teach her. Problem with her intelligence is not, problem per se, it's just a consequence of her intelligence is that she's also able to figure things out about me. She's also able to control situations or attempt to control situations um, where I might not want her to do that. Um, this happens outside when we play. Um, this happens inside when she wants food. This happens when I'm trying to get her to come home. Uh, there are very subtle behaviors that she's learned to do that allow her to extend her time outside or allow her to get more food or uh, spend more time playing or keep people from like coming inside the house or just various things. She's going to figure out the behaviors that, um, that she needs to do to get you to do things that she wants to do. So number three, if you don't want a dog that's going to try to manipulate you and try to get you to do what it wants or you're not comfortable with a scenario where you're controlling a dog and it makes you feel bad, then this might not be the dog for you because a dog is intentionally doing those behaviors to, to, to get you to do things. Number four, these dogs live forever. And that can be good, you might love that. You might want a dog to live forever.
but you, you you may not. You may want to have a dog that lives only five years. These are things you really do need to consider. The dog is going to last a pretty long time. It might not last you. That being said, there are some genetic issues with the do with with these dogs that you need to get tested. Um, deafness and blindness being the two big ones. Uh, the last thing you probably want is a dog with a lot of energy, it's going to live a long time, has a, a very significant disability and an inability to uh, effectively let out its energy. Uh, this is going to be a scenario where you're probably going to have a destructive, destructive animal. Number five. Number five. These dogs are needy. More like a jealous girlfriend. Something addictive and unhealthy about it. Um, a lot of the behaviors, and you'll see as I make more videos, a lot of the behaviors surround anxiety. This makes them great for going outside or doing hikes off leash. Um, the cat, these dogs do not want to be by themselves. They, they would rather be around you when you're angry and off by themselves away from you but they'd look at you stare at you this particular deal breaker is ignored by a lot of people i just won't give it as much attention as you're saying i should the consequence of that is destructive behavior it sees you putting on shoes it sees you putting on handbags or whatever it is that you touch a lot or you seem to like the dog's gonna go after those things and make sure that it finds a way to get your attention. Okay, so the top five deal breakers of the Australian cattle dog and reasons that you should really consider before you get one are A, one, one. They do bite. They bite and they will bite for the rest of their lives and maybe the rest of your life. And two, they are long-lived animals. They live forever. Are you capable of dealing with this dog for 20 years? Number three, they're smart, but they're also manipulative and they're going to figure ways to try to manipulate you. Four, they have a ton of energy. They have so much energy. You have two, two to three hours a day to spend with the dog. Number five, they're needy. They're emotionally needy animals and they have anxiety about it. Don't get a catalog unless you're very confident you can deal with one. Okay guys, that's the top five deal breakers. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you found it useful and um, if I haven't scared you away from getting an Australian cattle dog, they're great dogs. Honestly, they are great dogs, but you have to be ready for them. That's it. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this content or found it useful. Uh, stay tuned. I have more videos coming out on this on the Australian cattle dog, and I'd love for you guys to stick around. Okay, guys. Bye. -bye.